Hello everyone, special delivery. Today we are going to talk about a meowing yokai. Working to make sure all packages in her care get delivered where they need to go. Karara, is your cat? Upon the eaves delivery girl who's a cat yokai. So let's begin talking about her. Kirara is a playable dendro character in Genshin Impact. A yokai, a nekomada specifically, Kirara is a golden level carrier of the Inuzomi base Kamania Express. Her vigilance in ensuring every package would be delivered to the right place has increased her company's renown and hers making her the sole carrier handling international deliveries. She enjoys every delivery she makes, as she considers these outings for herself. Kira is a 4-star female character in Genshin Impact. She uses a sword as a weapon and her vision power is Dendro. Her birthday is January 22nd and her constellation is Ursela. And she comes from the region of Inazuma where she has an affiliation with the Komania Express. Her special dish is Energizing Bento, a variant of the Invigorating Kitty Meal. She became the playable character on May 24, 2023. The four voice actors of this kitty delivery gal in the four localizations of Genshin Impact are Julia Gu in English, Sun Yan Chi in Chinese, Susu Shiro Sayumi in Japanese, and Kan Yue in Korean. Kira has two known titles she goes by, which are Cat Upon the Elves and Gold Level Carrier of the Komani Express. Kira is a slim, fair skinned young woman with pale, ash blonde hair that sticks out in tufts and green eyes. Part of her hair is tied into a high ponytail, and she has a long ahoge in the middle of it. She wears a brown cat ear-like accessory decorated with gold and flowers in line with blue fabric and white fur. Along with this, her hair is styled with a number of yellow and brown hairpins, as well as one flower-shaped clip on the right of her hair. Kirara has a distinct set of two-toned cat tails. Kirara's outfit consists of a dark-colored cropped top made up of two pieces of fabric and decorated in the middle with a large yellow ornament with a jingle bell and two yellow tassels. Over this, she wears a patterned light blue tunic with drenched sleeves decorated around her arms with white fur and long, dark, fingerless gloves that stretch past her elbow. Around her wrist, waist I mean, Kirara wears a stylized black belt consisting of a long piece of black fabric held together with numerous bows of various colors, with a dangling ornament pinned to it and a small blue cape decorated with flowers. Under all of this, she wears a pleated blue skirt lined with gold in a set of black leg warmers. As with many other yokai, Kirara has an alternate feline farm, although she does not use it as often as it attracts too much attention. Kirara is a yokai who enjoys working at Komania Express as she is curious about the world outside to that. It enjoys public interactions, seeing them as outings at her own expense. Due to her lack of knowledge about the outside world, she often mistakes others with non-human feature or magic users to be other forms of yokai, such as mistaking Donna as a Monsat yokai due to her cat ears or Lenny to be one due to his magic skills. 
She enjoys her job and ensures that her customers have a pleasant experience frequently worried about the prospect of getting fired and having to return to the wilds, which she considers boring. As a Nekamada, Carrera often has various feline interactions such as sleeping in boxes, pouncing on small animals, and sunbathing on roofs. Though she has fr to frequently suppress these instinctions while in her human form to better interact with society. Box cutter is Kirara's normal attack. The normal attack performs up to 5 rapid strikes, while the charge attack consumes a certain amount of stamina and, launches, and unleashes 3 rapid claw strikes. The plummeting attack plunges from mid-air to strike the ground, damaging opponents along the path and dealing AoE damage upon impact. Meow Tor Kick is Kirara's elemental skill. Using press, she leaps into the air with all the agility of a cat passing through the bushes, and thwacks her foes with a flying kick that deals AoE dandro damage, while creating a shield of safe transport. This will also briefly appear apply Dendro to Kira. The shield will absorb Dendro damage with 250% effectiveness. The shield's damage absorption will be based on Kira's max HP and will not exceed a certain percentage of that max HP. The remaining damage absorption of the shield of safe transport will stack on a new one when it is created, and its duration will be reset. Using hold out of her desire to deliver within half a day, Kira deploys a shield of safe transport identical to the one that can be created by pressing the skill. She will also curl up into a special express delivery box entering an urgent Neko parcel state in order to move and fight more swiftly. The urgent Neko parcel can do these things. It deals dandro damage to opponents she crashes into. The effect it, the, this effect can tri be triggered once on each opponent every 5 seconds. To when in this state, Kira's movement speed, climbing speed, and jumping power are all increased, and her stamina consumption from climbing is increased. 3. When a duration ends or the skill used is again, a flip claw strike more powerful than the attack in the mode will be unleashed, dealing AoE dandro damage. 4. The urgent Neko parcel state lasts a maximum of 10 seconds. When the state ends, the skill when will enter a CD. The longer Kira spends on this state, the longer the CD will be. And lastly, sprinting or actively cancelling climbing will end the state early. Secret Art Surprise Dispatch is Kira's elemental burst. She will smash opponents with a special delivery package used for punishing parcel thieves. Dealing AoE dandro damage, after the special delivery package explodes, it will split up into many cat grass cardamoms that will explode either upon contact with opponents or after a period of time, dealing AoE dandro damage. Bewitching Bewitching Tales is Kiara's first Ascension Passive Scale. When Kiara is in the urgent Neko Parcel stay of Meowtor Kick, each impact against an opponent will grant her a stack of reinforced packaging. This effect can be triggered once for each opponent hit every 5 seconds. Max 3 stacks. When an urgent Neko Parcel stay ends, each stack of reinforced packaging will create one shield of safe transport for Kira. The shields that are created this way will have 20% of the damage absorption that the shield of safe transport produced by Meowtor Kick will have. If Kira is already protected by a shield of safe transport created by Meowtor Kick, its damage absorption will stack with these shields, and its duration will be set. Pupillary Variance is Kira's 4th Ascension Passive Skill. Every 1000 max HP Kira possesses will increase the damage dealt by Meowtor Kick by 4%, and the damage dealt by Secret Art Surprise Dispatch by 3%. 
Cat's creeping carriage is Kiara's utility pass skill. When Kiara is in the party, animals who produce flour, raw meat, or chilled meat will not be stared when party members approach them. I mean, startled when they're approached. If you ask anyone in Inazuma which delivery company is most reliable, the name Kamani Express will surely be mentioned. If you were to continue the line of inquiry and ask just what about their service left the deepest impression, you would see a smile creep onto their lips as they tell you of a certain special courier. That adorable, vicious, vivacious young yokai with two twin tails, after you think of her for delivering, your package, she will bow deeply while wearing an expression of unthreaded bliss, as though she was the one receiving the gift. If you're willing to spend the time to leave a 5-star rating on the feedback board or give her a few snacks, you may even see stars of joy shoot from this yokai's eyes as her tails switch back and forth. Ah, but the same person who tell you this will also warn you that this Nekamata isn't some weak little thing you can just pick up. If you have designs on packages that don't belong to you or get carried away and try to touch her tails, well then you'll have to face the consequences. After hearing all this, it's hard to resist going to Kamani Express. Excuse me, I have a package to deliver and I was hoping the Neko. Without waiting for you to finish, the owner turns around and shouts, Here are another one for you, as though it were an everyday occurrence. At that moment, a beaming girl with bo will bound towards you, quickly fix her hair and adjust her clothing and say with a smile, Welcome and thank you for choosing Komani Express. Kiara's earliest memories are of wandering the wilds of Inazuma. Back then, she was a nameless kitten with one tail, and woke every morning with an empty, growling stomach after a stretch, a yawn, and a single meow, as though the bellyache about her circumstances, she would begin to hunt for breakfast. The menu often included Finches that had let down their guard, or overly curious young fish, too near the shore. Whenever she encountered adventurers out in the wilderness, she would lie down at a safe distance and watch intently as they, w w as they fished out all kinds of marvelous instruments with their packs. Floosh. Suddenly, there was a fire roaring. Bong. A strange cauldron was set upon over the fire, and then, if a bubbling sound, an intoxicating scent would occasionally wave over on the breeze. Observing this process with wide eyes, to her, it was as if she had witnessed magic. Thus, a yearning for human society began to flutter about in her chest, as though a butterfly had flown into her heart. During a frigid winter night, with a biting, with the biting winds howling, Kirara, still a small kitten, was frozen to the point of being unable to feel her tail. Got to find a warm place to hide. Even a howl in the tree will do. She thought to herself. But when she was able to look up, she saw a cluster of warm lights flickering not too far away. This was the first time Kirara entered a human home. And while she was curious about everything around her, she was also frightened. The owner of the house seemed not to notice the kitten that had found its way into her home. But Kiara paid little notice. She found a small square box near the entryway in which she snuggled the fit. And into it she sat, falling asleep almost immediately. I'll just rest tonight, just one night were her last thoughts before dreaming look where dreams took her. Yet when she awoke, she found a warm fire cradled around her next, and beside was a fragrant bowl of Neko Mama. 
Directly across her from was an old lady in the middle of knitting a wool woolen sweater. The old lady seemed to be trying to say something, as though encountering her to eat, encouraging her to eat, with all her with her tail down and guard rise. She carelessly take the bite of the aromatic nagamata in front of her that she was to was so curious about. It was the most delicious thing she had ever eaten, to the point she began to doubt whether or not she was still dreaming. And so, she stayed in that cozy little home for one winter after another, and heard story after story from that kind old woman. On occasion, when Kiara thinks back to the first night, she'll clock her head and ask herself, Strange, what was I thinking about before I fell asleep again? Kirar enjoys human cities, with their fireworks, marketplaces, and scattered eaves. There is always something she never seen before, waiting to be discovered. When she first came, became the Nekomata, she used her yokai powers to enter Inazuma City in a human form. She eagerly explored every nook and cranny in the city, and not even the roof of the almighty shogun's Ten Shikaku was immune from her curiosity. This is the reason that the Tenryo Commission is one of the addresses she is most familiar with. Though that the Tenryo Commission taught her rules like don't climb on other people's roofs and don't eat the ornamental koi, then she learned how to be a good yokai in human society from none other than Lady Kitsune of Grand Nakami Shrine. Kirara has caught the eye of the greatest and coolest yokai, as she calls her, and Yeimiko, for her part, has been willing to impart all her experience upon her lively and interesting junior. Upon learning that Kira felt the streets and alleys of Inazuma City were priceless treasures, Miko recommended that she sneak she sneak appointment at Komani Express. If you want to blend into human society, then you must work like an ordinary human. This is most important, thus spoke Lady Kitsune. Ah yes, the illusionist priestess abroad. Packages addressed to Gujie at the Grand Arakami Shrine must be given the utmost priority. This is even more paramount than what I just said before. Sometimes bandits with less than honorable intentions will convert those bulging parcels. Hiding beside the paths that the deliveries must take, they carefully eye the passing carriers. If the delivery person looks tough or is in a group, the bandits won't risk it. After all, it's just another day with an empty stomach at most. But when they have a chance to, upon the carrier like Kyria, appearing delicate and traveling alone, their hearts leap with joy and anticipation. They can nearly taste the mora that has fallen neatly into their lap. When Kira passes, the bandits emerge from concealment and surround her, maliciously blocking her way forward. Huh, do you need something? Kira stops uncertainly. Upon closer inspection, the young lady has two tails. Strange, to be sure, but she looks frail, and her face is kind. The perfect prey. Though, and though, even better, the package she carries is bursting with dick packages. Truly, this is a good day for a robbery. Um, if you have packages, you'll like a deliverer? Please visit our Inazuma City awful- most bandits don't even let her finish before brandishing their blades. The more polite sort will attempt to persuade her to put down her delivery pack, willingly for her own safety. The desperate will simply swarm her, hands outraged to plunder. But whatever their methods, the result is always the same. The next morning, several large packages appear on the doorstep of the Tenryo Commission under the type of good, goods delivered section of the delivery strip sealing with packages a single word will be written meanies when she first moved to inazuma city kira would often lie by the roadside observing pedestrians passing by 
Oh, so this is how human girls dress. Her wish to join human society made her very cautious of her own outfit, and whether or not it was similar to those around her. In the springtime, girls will often pluck a flower to place behind their ear or in their hair. Soon after, a special accessory became quite popular. Then everyone began flocking to some particular style of bracelet. Kiara accepted by every style without question, imitating every trend as she saw it. She never thought there was anything wrong with what she was doing, just that all those accessories would occasionally restrict her movement and make it hard for her to climb up and down. It was so different from being a kitten out in the countryside. This persisted one day when she was delivering a package to an old customer named Chiori, and she received a serious dressing down. At the time, Kira had politely knocked it on the door before gently pushing her way inside, but she couldn't f have known that Chiori would glare at Kira as though she were a cat that had fallen into a bucket of paint. The Inazuma fashion designer who had opened a famous design label in Fontaine was already quite familiar with Hirara, and so she spoke directly. Utter insanity, what did you do on the way here? Fight specters? What kind of garbage have you covered yourself in? How did that garnish flower get stuck in your hair? It's insulting my eyeballs. Really, the one thing on your entire body would, with a speck of taste is those shoes. Uh, Chiori, you know those, those are just my feet. Kiara managed to slumber nervously. Chiori buried her face in her hands and immediately picked it up her scissors and some cloth before pulling Kiara into a changing room. Now don't you misunderstand, it's just that I'd be embarrassed to let anyone see you walking out of my shop looking like that. The dressing down became a dressing up, and after the sound of snapping scissors in a swift needlework faded into silence, Kara had the outfit she now wears today. From then on, she had a new task when delivering packages, answering clients' questions about just where she got the delightful outfit. Thus did the reputation of Chiori's shop spread far and wide. Hmm, I told you my judgment in was immaculate. On this delivery one to Fontaine, Chiara found her friend in seemingly much better spirits. Other than the clothing orders, is there anything else? inquired Chiori. Yes, there is. It's just that. Come on, out with it. Stop beating around the bush. The customers are asking if you that is your shop can be can you release a shoe design that looks like a cat's paw pads. To Kiara, every delivery is a priceless treasure. Each package takes her to different places and allows her to see all kinds of scenery. After work, Kiara would go to the undelivered packages section of the warehouse and see all the myriad reasons of that packages couldn't be delivered to the recipients. Filled in wrong address, recipient moved, wrong name. Each standard package was like a fishbone logged in her throat, choking her slowly. Thus, she began to quietly record the details of each package and use her roots during work and spare time to discover the whereabouts of each recipient. This resulted in her reputation of Kamani Express increasing by the day, as customers rushed to praise the reliability and quality of their service. No package was undeliverable. When the owner of Komani Express heard of this, they spent all night designing a new title to issue to Kira, Gold Level Curator. Actually, when I saw that the undelivered packages section was empty, I thought we'll be robbed, confined the owner. For Kiara, her greatest happiness is that the movement she delivers a package into the hands of the recipient, after a long day making deliveries, she likes to climb to a high place, taking the, in the sights of the city while listening to the sounds of Mirith drifting upwards from the marketplace. This is when she recalls her days as a kitten, listening to stories on the lap of that old lady. 
The twists and turns in Southern Revolves to fantastic beasts and monsters all generally follow Kira's memories like the cool evening breeze blowing gently into her hair. And just like the old days, she gently closes her eyes as the story is intangible with her dreams, welcoming the revival of a tomorrow with content. Some clients of Komani Express may be surprised to discover a mysterious package at their door. Most of these packages are small and exquisite and beautifully decorated. Cupping the parcel in their hands and shaking their heads, they might think it's strange as they haven't brought anything recently, nor is there any writing on the package. But they may have already forgotten that in the not too distant past, they gave some snacks to the that curator with two tails. Each package usually contains a lovely little gift, such as a dry flower of the Nalapala Lotus, a star cotch ornament, or if the household has young children, a scarab with a particular pattern on its shell. These are all items that Kira had collected while out on her deliveries to her. Each is a novel and fascinating treasure, and perfect as a thank you gift. Unfortunately, the rules of Komana Express forbid any transactions between employees and clients. Thus, Kiara must make each small box herself, adding cute decorations and quietly placing them on the recipient's doorsteps. However, the benefactory of by far the most mysterious package is, is a small home in the Inazuma countryside. Though Kira is quick to say she never wants to go back being some great yokai roaming the mountains and valleys whenever she has time, she will always run back to that old house from the frigid winter's night. Leaving a present at the door if she happens to find the old woman sunning herself in the yard. She immediately returned to being a cat. Meow, meow, she'll call, jumping up onto the woman's knees, curling up into a ball, and prompting her attention. Uh, back you are, Kiara. The old woman smiles and laughs. She doesn't know that this little cat is already a renowned curator. All she knows is that she often goes out to play for ever longer periods. You really are growing up so fast. I remember when I found you in the box, and you were such a tiny little thing. Scratching Kira's head, the old woman fishes out a round, shimmering pearl and places it on her paw pads. See, this is that song of pearl from the story. Now I don't know who it's from, but there is voices on the doorstep, along with some snacks too. The old woman also quietly observes to herself. When I wake up, the house is so clean and ordinary, and breakfast is already prepared. How very odd. Why haven't you grown into a yokai who takes care of me in my old age, have you? Little cat, whenever Kiara hears this, she stretches ironically, letting out a controlled yawn, and she prepares to have no idea what the old woman's saying. After speaking, the old woman files silent and just smiles warmly. The two of them then continue to enjoy a leisurely afternoon bathed in sunshine. One night, in the depths of midwinter, Kira was lying down by the coals, taking a nap, but tried as she might, she simply couldn't sleep well. The charcoal had long burned out, and even the smoldering embers had gasped their final breaths as the chill wind rattled and drew cracks in window frames and sped under the windows and doors. Kira involuntarily curled up tightly, hugging her tail close. Lightly, her tail was already always itchy and restless, and to, no matter how much she lifted it, it was never enough to calm it. Strange, Granny left this morning. She's been gone way too long. She quietly meowed in to herself. The final lingering ember became dark and ash, and even the residual warmth it had provided was snuffed out. 
Kira stretched out and looked it out uneasily at the snowflakes falling outside the house, and then quietly leapt it out the window. The snowflakes under her feet were chilly, and her paw pads soon arched from the cold. Climbing onto the roof, she gazed out towards the city, but the moon was totally obscured this night, and the surroundings were pitch black without even a speck of light. I remember there was a really, really tall tree nearby. Kira's tail seemed even more anxious than she was, as she climbed it repeatedly refused to obey her mental commands and nearly caused her to fall. The tree stretched it even upward, so tall it seemed without end. Kira did not think about just how high the, she can climb. Instead, stories of yokai and humans raced across her mind. It seemed as if she wasn't climbing a tree, but pursuing days gone by. And if she was but a step too slow, all might slip away from her. Forever. Faster. Just a bit faster. Finally, she reached the crowd of the tree, and all the world lay spread beneath her. In the distance, a dazing light suddenly lit in the blackness before her eyes like a firefly, the light from the city at night. In at that moment, it was as if something dormant in Kira's heart was ignited, and all that fantastical stories of the past had finally become reality, a thousand rays of streaming light streaming into the galaxy of fireworks. The stories that had once seemed so far away were now so close, she could almost reach out and touch them, and see. And she now yearned, as never before, to bask in that glow. Ah, I see her. Somehow, an unseen power helped Akira pick up the, that one person she desired to see amongst the dazzling stream of lights. When she finally alighted back on the ground, the clouds parted and the moonlight cast her shadow upon the snow, a shadow that now boasted two tails. Are you sure you don't want to stay the night? The snow has only just stopped it, and getting back won't be easy urged the landlord. No, no, I couldn't. I have a little cat at home, waiting for my return, haha, <laughs> laughed the old woman as she stood before the entryway. If that's the case, I'll take you back, a young female voice suddenly reined out from outside. The landlord and old woman peered outside, and there was a youthful young lady with two relentless, restless tails, and a shining vision dangling from her waist. Kira's name means sparkling or glittering and gauze or thin silk cloth. Together, her name can mean sparkling silk or glittering gauze. Her constellation, Arcella, seems to be an Italian name meaning little box. Fact 1. Kira carries her weapon diagonally unlike almost every other sword-wielding character who carries their sword vertically. This is likely due to her tails being in the way if the sword is carried vertically. Fact 2. Kira is seen wielding the Emanana Kejuji in her character demo and collected miscellany. And that's Kira. I hope you enjoyed. This is going to be our last character information for Inazuma, and we should be going over to Shimero playable characters, but I have decided to wait on that. We're actually gonna go back to Monsa and Liwei playable characters. Starting with Liwei, we will talk about Yao Yao. So see you next time.